Chris, you got a question about how you maintain your winning culture year in and year out, specifically about the team activities and expectations that you set that allow you to be, be so successful. Well, I, I think the biggest thing that we do is, you know, we're a process oriented organization. Uh, people look at me sometimes when I say, you know, outcomes are a distraction. We want to focus on what we need to do to get the outcome. Like if you walk around our building um, at Alabama, you'll see no signs that say, say win the SEC championship. You'll see no signs that say win the national championship. Uh, there is one sign that says be a champion. And then there's a pyramid of what it takes to be a champion. Uh, you got to be a team player. Uh, together, everybody accomplishes more. Uh, people have to respect and trust in the principles and values of the organization. And they got to respect and trust in each other. And they got to be accountable to each other. I mean, there's a responsibility and obligation that every individual has on the team, not to me, I, but to themselves and to each other. And if they're going to be trusted by the, their teammates, um, they have to do their job and they have to do it well. Second part of that is you got to be positive. You know, to me, body language is, is, you know, negative body language kind of brings everybody down. Positive body language being having energy, enthusiasm, um, you know, being positive in your work uh, helps you create more value for yourself, helps you improve, but it also affects the people around you in a very positive way. So I, I don't, we don't like negative people. We don't like people who judge. I, who judge what we do, like why we practice in the day, why are we doing fourth quarter program? I, I don't want to hear that. Uh, it, you, th that's a principle and by the organization that you choose to buy into. And when you buy into it, you need to go about it in a positive way, which is going to help you get better. And it's going to help us get better. And the third thing is, is everybody's got to be responsible for their own self-determination. That's all about accountability. You know, if you're going to be a professional someday, you got to be responsible. Somebody's going to define an expectation. Somebody's going to define a standard and you got to be accountable to it. And if you're not, they're going to fire you and get somebody else. So it's no different on our team. So everybody needs to learn how to do that. And we define that. I mean, we define the expectation for our players personally, academically and athletically. And we define the expectation of what we expect them to do and the standard we expect them to do it to. And that helps them be successful. So, and the last thing is you got to have work ethic, you got to have character, you got to have discipline, you got to have self-discipline to make choices and decisions that are going to benefit you and help you um, make the kind of choices and decisions that are going to create value for you in your future. You got to have perseverance. You cannot be a great competitor if you don't have perseverance and you can't overcome adversity. So pride in performance, being the best player you can possibly be, reaching your full potential, I mean, these are all things that give players great self-gratification. So that's what it takes from a culture standpoint to be a champion. And that's what we try to promote with our players. You know, we don't even talk about winning the game. We talk about dominating the competition. Again, it's one play at a time for 60 minutes in the game. There's no scoreboard. There's no external factors that are going to, you know, determine how I play and how I compete and how I perform. And I tell players all the time, when I was in the NFL, they used to make me a cut up of you. And I watched how you play. I didn't know the score of the game. So are you playing different when we're 14 points behind? Are you playing different when we're 14 points ahead? So there is no scoreboard. You should try to be the best player you can be and dominate your box every play that you play. Because that's what I'm going to look at. That's what you're going to get evaluated on. No, and nobody, I, I didn't even know who you're playing against. So does that mean if we're playing a good team, I play really good, but when we're playing a bad team, I don't play very good. So your standard should not be determined by some external factor, which includes who's the competition, because it's all about you being the best version of yourself, being the best competitor, playing your best all the time. And you have to train yourself to be able to do that. You know, you got to be in great condition or you're not going to be able to sustain your effort. You're not going to be able to sustain your toughness. Uh, and not going to be able to, to, to mentally stay focused on what you need to do because when you get tired, you're going to lose focus and make mental errors. So all these things create value, but these things are all talking about what you control, what you can do to help your team be successful. You know, everybody says there's no I in team, but there is an I in win. 
And that's the individuals that make the team what it is. So you got to define the expectation for what you expect the players to do. And then you surround them with the best, best people to help them do that. And then doing that, you're creating a culture of accountability, which helps them be the best version of themselves. Look, everybody's got to have a vision for what they want to do. Everybody's got to know what they have to do to do it but they have to have the discipline to execute it every day. And this is where people struggle. They struggle the most at this part of it. And I'm not talking about the sign on the wall that says disciplines do what you're supposed to do, when you're supposed to do it, the way it's supposed to get done, do the right thing, the right way, the right time, all the time. Those are great definitions of discipline and leave every one of those signs up. I'm talking about self-discipline. Comes down to two questions. We make hundreds of decisions every day that come down to two questions. Here's something I know I'm supposed to do that I really don't want to do. Can you make yourself do it? Over here, there's something you know you're not supposed to do, but you want to do it. Can you keep yourself from it? If you can make those choices and decisions the right way, you're always going to stay on the path of being able to do the things you need to do to accomplish the goals that you have. It's how you have to edit your behavior to accomplish the goals that you have. You can't just do what you feel like doing. You got to choose to do the things you need to do to accomplish the goals that you have. So in a nutshell, that's kind of how we try to do it. 